So this video is all about my badass wheels and tires because a lot of you keep asking questions. John, what are those badass wheels and tires? So you know what I did? I put a post out on our Instagram account. I'll put the link down there for you now and said, I'm making a video about our badass wheels and tires. So if you've got any questions for the video, put them on the post. Instagram, by the way, is like our what's coming soon to YouTube or behind the scenes. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, then you should do because you get involved a little bit more with our videos. Anyway, back to the badass wheels and tires. What exactly are they? Well, as you can see, the badass tires are BF Goodrich KO2s and they're all terrain tires rated for mud and snow. But apparently, according to the manufacturers, they're made for extreme snow, which probably means they really did help out, as we know, uh, as we were coming through the snow in Spain a few weeks back. Um, and the wheels are MSW WRC number fours, apparently. That's the best code I can find for the serial number and the data numbers on the wheels. Um, but yeah, brilliant wheels. And specifically, this set combined works because, as we know, motorhomes, they're heavy. So the wheels have a rating of 1500 kilograms each, that's per wheel. So across an axle, that is 3000 kilograms of weight that those wheels can handle. The tires, uh, their load rating is 115, and I have to look this one up because I don't know exactly, uh, which is 2430. So just over 2400 kilograms across an axle. So the wheels far exceed the load rate of the, uh, the actual tires, which is good in that sense. But what it means in real terms is uh, you'll have a little plate on your camper van motorhome and it'll tell you what the maximum weight of your rear axle and front axle. Obviously, if you've got more than one rear axle, that'll be stated there as well. Um, and in this case, if you've got dual axles at the back, uh, the load rating decreases. Uh, just bear in mind that anything over 2,430 kilograms across the axle and you'll need a different load rating tire. But for us, that's far in excess of our load rating tyre, so we're fine with that one. Let's crack on then with the questions that people asked. Uh, what tyre pressures do you run on your new wheels and tyres, John? No, 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 no. Let's rephrase that. John, what tyre pressures do you run on your badass wheels and tyres? Thank you. That's a better question. Uh, I run 50 PSI at the front and 53 PSI at the back. And that is a really, 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 really sweet spot between wallowing like it's too soft and not having my fillings shattered, shattered out of my teeth, uh, getting the feedback on the road that I want. It handles fine and it still cuts through the majority of mud and snow and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, sweet spot for us. You may well adjust them uh, to be more what you consider to be you know, the, the correct pressures for you. But that is something to bear in mind as well, because you're probably thinking right now, that's extremely low in comparison to what you've got on your motorhome or camper van, because those tires normally say you need 70 PSI or something equivalent. And that's because their sidewall, this bit, isn't as strong as these tires. So these tires are meant for rugged terrain and their sidewall is absolutely strong as, whereas the one on the normal tires, are not as good. Therefore, they need more pressure inside to retain the shape of the tire. This doesn't need as much pressure inside it to keep that shape because the sidewall's doing it, which means that you get a more comfortable ride. Uh, it also means that in situations where you might get stuck, you can really reduce that tire pressure. We've done it a couple of times. Uh, we got stuck in gravel coming out of a um, uh, beach park up. I think we spotted that in a video. Uh, so we reduced that on the third attempt of getting up. Uh, I reduced them to 25 PSI and that got us over the stumbling block and got us out of the situation. And then as soon as I was back on the tarmac, I then pumped them back up to 50 at the front and that's it. A uh, quick tip on that one as well is if you still can't get yourself out going forwards, uh, reverse out. I've done that once in our old van. Um, you've got to remember it's a fat ass van. Most of them are, most of the weights in the back when you've built a motorhome or camper van and stuff like that. It's not really a lot of weight in front. So by reversing backwards, you're getting the benefits of rear wheel drive car, which means more control and more traction. So essentially 
by going backwards up a hill or something like that or across a field um, you may well get better traction you may well get out of a situation you otherwise couldn't get out of so little top tip there right back to the questions uh, Dave, do you have any issues going from 15 inch to 16 inch no none at all everything has been perfectly okay and um, there was a question somebody have related to this one which is did your speedo need recalibrating and no strangely enough on 15 inch wheels and tires the speedo was out so for example going down a motorway at 70 miles an hour the speedo was actually reading 70 well, our gps and sat nav and all that was telling us we're only doing about 65 to 66 so this was interesting when we got the 16 inch wheels and tires the speedo the gps and sat nav and everything are all spot on now and we're doing 70 69 70 kind of thing so yeah much better uh, next question uh, have you noticed any difference with road noise i really wouldn't say we have in all fairness but we didn't notice them from the um continental van contacts i think they were called or something like that or van campers uh, to the bfg ko2 is about the same uh, a related question as well has the fuel economy changed no but i have to have a bit of a caveat here i don't sit down i've got not got it on a spreadsheet or anything um, it's just the onboard computer on the van that i look at that tells me my average my average didn't change it's still about 29 if we go down the motorway we get about 38 39 if we're going up mountains or you know urban areas and stuff like that um, and it can drop below to 19 or something like that but i've not noticed any major i'm not chucking in an extra you know 20 quid or something to do the same miles as i used to nothing like that so if it is different it could be you know that it's not even a mile per gallon or two mile per gallon something like that so the next question is a bit of a combined question is it's about the longevity of the tire and the cost of the tire and they're a bit of a combined one there's a bit of a maths involved i'll go for the cost first they're about 40 pounds cheaper in today's money i've just looked now about 40 pounds cheaper than the michelin agilis cross climate um, the goodyear cross climate and the uh, continental van contact or whatever it's called so they're cheaper already so bear that in mind the second thing is these come with a warranty of 50,000 miles so anything that goes wrong with the manufacturing side under 50,000 miles you get a free tire so what can you expect to get out of it in real terms a lot of people are saying it's not uncommon to get 60,000 miles out of them on average though people are saying between 30 and 40,000 miles I've done 10,000 and my tread depth has dropped one millimeter and that's on the front and it's a front wheel drive on the back it's just under one millimeter I can't really tell but it's not exactly as much as the front so given that there's that much tread depth still in there <laughs> of a good 10 millimeters I'm easily going to get 40,000 out of them so the Michelins and the the you know continental tires etc they are probably going to get you about 20,000 miles so you're going to replace two lots of their tires for one lot of these that makes these less than half price of the other tires available if you work it out that way just saying they're ace badass next one is uh, how have they performed in mud snow sand ice tarmac gravel etc uh, they perform brilliant um, ice well it's rubber it's not going to be any better it's not studded or anything like that they don't really stop any better than a normal tire in ice um but you know that's just saying that uh, in snow they were brilliant but you'd expect that because they are actually extreme snow relate, um, rated in soft sand or hard sand they were completely okay no issues there uh, gravel like i say we did have to drop the tire pressures once to get out but other than that no issues mud you will tear up a field you will create your own tracks going down a field um, because they grip so well so probably if you do get stuck in a field drop the tire pressures again and that'll sort you out or try and go backwards like i said that'll sort you out uh, as far as tarmac 
uh, road handling on tarmac, brilliant, no problem. Uh, you don't get aquaplaning or anything like that. It just cuts straight through any water on the road. So whether it's dry or wet, they've been absolutely brilliant. Next question is, do they fit straight onto the motorhome or did you have to modify anything? No, no modification needed. Um, they don't touch any of the bodywork, um, even full travel of suspension or full travel left to right lock at the front. Nothing catches anywhere. On the back, it was a bit tighter. Uh, but nothing catches there's not as much gap around on the back but that's pretty much what it's like on most wheels and tires anyway on the back um, but yeah nothing catches or rubs here's a really good one and um recently we went for an mot it's going to be in this week's blog um but yeah we went for an mot the mot was due soon and i asked him about recording it and he said unfortunately you can't record an mot legal reasons so I paid a little bit extra to have a pre-MOT check so I could chat with him and record stuff. So while I was doing that, I said, um, wheels and tyres, the, uh, the MOT, yeah, no problems. And he went, you're joking. He says they're way overrated for what's needed. So that's a winner as far as an MOT is concerned. Very safe wheels and tyres. Uh, the tyres obviously still got tons of tread depth on them. He actually says they're scrubbed in now, aren't they? They're just about scrubbed in. So, um, yeah, this is obviously not catching anywhere. So, yeah, no problems whatsoever. They are definitely road legal and will pass an MOT. They don't protrude from the bodywork. They're, you know, they're not going to catch anyone, pedestrians coming past or anything like that. Uh, this one I can't answer because our van doesn't have this feature. Uh, the question was, uh, has anything to do with the new wheels and tyres affected your TPMS system? Uh, tire pressure monitoring system like I said we don't have it on our van so I can't comment on that unfortunately uh, if you've got TPMS and you've got these wheels and tires then obviously you can comment and let people know them um, has it affected the ride and comfort of the van obviously we've spoken about that I've adjusted the tire pressures so that I'm very happy now with the ride and comfort of the van so I would say yes it's affected it it's much better um, and the last question is, um, have you got stuck anywhere? Obviously, I've mentioned about we didn't really get stuck stuck. We don't have to been towed out, but, you know, you can reverse backwards or drop the tyre pressures and stuff like that. But in any place that we've been over the last nine months, we've been totally OK. Even, um, you know, muddy grass and like saying gravel embankments and all that kind of stuff been fine. If you do want to go and buy them, uh, they are linked on our website. So if you go to our website, which has changed, just to bear that in mind, we have gone through the rebranding of everything. So we are now John and Mandy, and the website is johnandmandy.uk. Um, but they are listed on the motorhome page. So johnandmandy.uk slash motorhome, and you can just buy them. They'll get delivered next day. Uh, they're on eBay. If you do need to speak to Elite Wheels and Tires in Reading, which is where I bought them from, then just mention about John and Mandy's video and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not being facetious or anything like that, I'm not being cheeky, but please, if you have got a question and there was a chance that you didn't pay full attention to the video, please go back and watch it again. And if your question is still there <clears throat> and you're not called Louise, because if you're called Louise and you're watching this video about wheels and tires, you got more important things to worry about. Uh, but if, yeah, if you're not called Louise and if you've got a question that is valid and it isn't already answered in the video, then by all means, um, ask down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll go back inside now because it is freezing and my hands, I can't feel my fingers. Take care. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. <music>